So, we've weighed the aircraft, now we need to find out what the center of gravity is. And that's where math comes in. We're calculating the center of gravity specific to the example we worked on, that sundowner we worked on in the hangar. We need the weight and the moment for both wings, the weight and moment for the tail, and the weight and moment for the fuel that happens to be in the wings. I kind of cooked up the example a little bit just to make it look different from what we did last time. So, I made some fake measurements here. We're going to suppose that the left main was 1,000 pounds, the right main was 1,000 pounds, and the tail was minus 100 pounds, giving me a net weight of 1,900 pounds. Because there's no tear, we didn't have any blocks on top of the scale or anything that we weighed that was excessive, so we only weighed the aircraft, sadly, plus the fuel. But here's where we take out things like whatever else we might put on that we had to weigh. So our net is the same as our scale weight, 1,000, 1,000, minus 100, 1,900 pounds. This will bring down here in the aircraft is weighed column. So we've got that for later figuring with the fuel. Then to calculate the moment, well, we need to know what the arm of each measurement is. For each weight, the arm was 129.4 inches, and for the tail, it was 285.9. That number came from the manual with the aircraft. So it told us, we didn't measure it, it told us 129.4 for the wings, 285.9 for the tail. Take 1,000, multiply by 129.4, so on each of the wings, 129,400 is the moment. Remember, that's the net weight times the arm. On the tail, it's 285.9 times minus 100 gave us minus 28,590. Do the math, we add those two, subtract that, we have 230,210 inch pounds. Because it's the arm is in inches and the weight was in pounds. Bring that down here as the aircraft is weighed moment. But we had fuel in the aircraft. For the sake of having something different this time, instead of using the amount that we used as, uh, as full fuel, we'll pretend that there are five gallons in each weight to give us a total of 10 gallons of fuel. Because we're using 100 low lead fuel, that weighs 6 pounds per gallon. We have 10 gallons times 6 is 60 pounds. So we subtract that weight off the net weight to give us 1,840 pounds. In the manual, it tells us the arm for the fuel tank is 117 inches. So we multiply the minus 60 times 117 gives minus 7,020 on the moment. So we take the moment for the aircraft, 230,210, subtract 7,020 for the fuel, gives us a moment of 223,190 inch pounds. To calculate the center of gravity, we take that net moment, 223,190, divided by the net weight, 1,840 pounds, so that's inch pounds divided by pounds, will leave us with 121.3 inches as our center of gravity. Now, is that good or not? Well, when we look on the graph, which again comes with the manual, it tells us that at 1,840 pounds, our center of gravity should be between 107.3 inches 118.3 inches. We're at 121 inches. We're too far towards the tail. We'd have to either add ballast to the nose to bring it back or change the configuration of whatever is in the aircraft so that it balances. The center of gravity must be, when empty, within the confines of the range that the manufacturer dictates. Otherwise, that aircraft is not going to fly.